the government priority should be number one to encourage the private sector in terms of participation. Number two, to use the existing infrastructure which is available uh, for various initiatives. So if you look at schools today, if you look at universities, if you look at engineering colleges, number of engineering colleges getting closed, the management institutions getting closed, all that infrastructure is available. So if this infrastructure is put to use during the unutilized time and the same faculty and teachers are being trained to impart education, one is that you will be able to uh, cater to a larger number of people. And number two, what would happen is that since the infrastructure cost would go away from the total cost of delivery, uh, the cost of education would come down. And uh, as I said in the morning, uh, what we need to also look at that we are at crossroads right now. So the question is that how do we evolve a middle path between skill and the higher education? where the education becomes relevant, it becomes productive and it is something which generates employability. Chamber, unlike any other chamber, is a chamber which has uh, a number one, uh, a national presence uh, being at the central level. So we do the advocacy, we talk to the government, uh, we advise the government in terms of policy what is happening. Apart from that, we are across the states. So what we do is that we can implement uh, all these initiatives what we talk at the grassroots level. So we are not only doing advocacy. So the presently PhD chamber what we are trying to do is to build up linkages uh, between the schools and the universities which has never existed. And once these linkages are built, we are trying to use these linkages for skill development certifications. And uh, one of the recent things what we learned that there are schools in backward area which are running CBSE curriculum but that CBSE curriculum is not going to take those children anywhere. So the idea is that the children who want to go into higher education, they go for higher education, but then they have someone at a university level or a degree or a certification body which can support them in terms of getting the necessary skills and the certificate. Uh, PhD Chamber is number one uh, a skills certification body for the government of India. Number two, we have set up an innovation and entrepreneur center uh, with University of Delhi. So these are the two major initiatives we have taken. And now we are working with Kumau University and uh, a university in Muradabad to again set up skill development centers there. Today what is happening is the, the technology is something which is unavoidable, right? Because uh, you and me, in our daily life, we all use technology. So how can education be left behind? Because half of the time, uh, you are having a device in your hand or you are uh, having an access to device. Secondly, those days are gone when people, uh, you know, just used to sit in a classroom or behind a desk and try to learn. Today, every moment is a learning experience. So, technology is something which can provide you learning anytime, anywhere. So, that is one advantage of technology. And number two, what technology does is that it gives you what you need. It is not like, you know, just going through a textbook and trying to read it. So say, suppose I want to go and find out on a specific uh, subject, we do that. Third is technology also gives you an opportunity to do a self-assessment that where do I stand in terms of my learning. And then there are tools and uh, softwares which are available which tell you where the gaps are and which areas you should be looking at. So technology is uh, required in terms of number one delivery, number two assessment and number three analytics. And all these three form a very critical uh, uh, linkage to the whole learning process. I would say what technology is doing that technology is uh, uh, shifting the way what people learn. So technology is just trying to, you know, uh, give you an opportunity to learn in an unconventional way. So that is something which is happening. The policy is still not clear. So number one, as far as foreign direct investment in education is concerned, the government has still not opened the doors. Uh, secondly, there have been a lot of memorandums signed between the government, between the institutions, where there is an exchange of faculty, where there is a, a, you know, joint research which is being carried out. But I would say on the ground there is not a single initiative which can be scaled up, where you can say that Australians have done something significant in India or 
so i feel that the time is yet to come but uh, that is something which is unavoidable but will happen very soon and it will bring the benefit no five years uh, down the line i see education sector first of all uh, there would be lot of people uh, who are dropping out of the present education system and not getting into higher education would at least be going the skill route and with the skill route what would also happen is that they would have an opportunity or a pathway from which they can go to higher education in future what they want so secondly what i will also kind of say is that lot of uh, programs which are running in the country right now like a bsc or a ba uh, the demand of these programs would go down people would understand the, that either they should have a skill or they should have a basic education which makes them employable today what is happening is that taking a degree has become more of a need because of a social reason than employability reason people will do their undergraduate and after that they will go to a private training provider to provide them some skills so there will be a balance which would be coming out in terms of quality of higher education and in terms of uh, vocational education being available to people uh, during the school or post secondary so that would be a great change